Well, it is certainly good, once again, to be here this afternoon, and what a blessing after such a wonderful service this morning, and being able to sing such wonderful songs then and now, and to be able to worship our God as we have. It is always a great thing to be able to do so, and we find ourselves here this afternoon, continuing where we left off last third Sunday, in this theme we're going to look at this year on these third Sundays in great people of the Bible. There are a number of people that obviously everyone or the majority of people are aware of. David, of course, one of those, Abraham, those like that. But there's a number of people mentioned in God's scriptures that give us so much information and and lessons that we can garner and enhance and great things that God has placed within his word for us to know that might be lesser known names but no lesser known or people and today having last month looked at Barnabas we're going to now turn our attention to Jonathan David's great friend best friend Jonathan, King Saul's son. You know, that word friend has in some ways lost a little bit of meaning nowadays. As we mentioned this morning, words can change and uh, develop or maneuver. Even within the scriptures, we saw how the word holy came to have an additional meaning under the law of Christ than it did under the old law. But words today, especially with the rapidness of technology and things of that nature, they can change easily, and this word friend is one of those. How many friends do you have on Facebook if you have Facebook? I think I checked it uh, this morning, was kind of just glancing at it. Over 1,600, it, Facebook tells me, over 1,600 friends I have. What about other social media platforms and things along those lines? Lies. Now, you and I know those aren't all our friends, right? They're acquaintances. But the reality is, and the Bible is clear on this fact, that friendship is good. Not only good, but really necessary in this spiritual war we're in. Necessary to help us get through this. It's good to have a lot of acquaintances. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's best to have at least that one friend whom you can put your full trust in to help you and be there for you. And when we look at these great people of the Bible, Jonathan is that to David. Obviously, while David was going through a very challenging and difficult time in his life with King Saul, Jonathan's own father, trying to kill him, that being David, Jonathan was a Friend. In fact, when we look at scriptures, we see that Jonathan was a friend who loved David. They loved each other very dearly. They were extremely very close with each other. In fact, they were so close that it's led some to misrepresent their relationship, unfortunately in the homosexual community and those who would try to pervert God's word, they'll talk about Jonathan and David's love for each other and, and talk about it as something that uh, was sexual in nature. As we talked about over the last several Sunday nights, of course, that's not true. God was a man after, uh, David was a man after God's own heart, as was Jonathan, we will see. And so this couldn't be further from the truth, but because in today's society, if two men or two women are that close, well, there has to be something there more than friendship. We read in 2 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 26. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan, David wrote. Very pleasant have you been to me. Your love to me was extraordinary surpassing the love of a woman. David and his relationship with Jonathan was so close 
that he recognized that he was closer to him than many of his or any of his wives. Now, obviously, David was in a different situation than us today, not living in monogamy and being king most of the time, marrying for political reasons. But one of the things we see from this, and one of the things God inspired having this written down for us to have, study, learn, and see is that men can love each other. Women can love each other without there being a sexual component to it. In fact, as we have said over and over now, love is an action. It's not an emotion. And what David is saying to Jonathan here is that, listen, you, Jonathan, who loves me and I love you, you have taken care of me, even when your father was trying to execute me, even when he was sending his armies out after me, you protected me. Jonathan loved David. And David loved Jonathan. Jonathan was a true friend. So what do we read concerning that love? Well, as I said before, it was demonstrated. Because love is an action, it's not an emotion, and Jonathan's friendship was based on love for David. He showed him his love, and David would show him love back. We see it demonstrated over and over in their attitudes. Jonathan was the prince to the kingdom of God, the Israelites. Think about that for a second. His best friend, David, has been named the next king. He is going to take his throne away. Jonathan knows it's not going to him. And yet neither is jealous of the other. With men and women, that's not always the case. We can get jealous of the accomplishments, prestige, or things of our friends. Yet when we look at how Jonathan loved David and David loved Jonathan, Jonathan could have been jealous saying, you're taking my spot. You're taking my kingdom. But instead, he wasn't jealous. He actually helped David, as I said before, stay alive. In 1 Samuel 24, 1 through 5, we read this. When Saul returned from following the Philistines, he was told, Behold, David is in the wilderness of Engadi. The Saul, then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of Israel and went to seek David and his men in front of wild goat's rocks. And he came to the sheepfolds, by the way, and there was a cave in Saul went in to relieve himself and David and his men were sitting in the innermost parts of the cave and then the men of David said to him here is the day of which the Lord said to you behold I will give your enemy into your hand and you shall do to him as shall uh, as it shall be seen good to you and David rose and stealthily cut off the corner of Saul's robe and afterward David's heart struck him because he had cut off the corner of Saul's robe and yet Jonathan and all this going on, this feud between his best friend and his father, would say there in 23, 17, Do not fear, for the hand of Saul, my father, shall not find you. You shall be king over Israel, and I shall be next to you. Saul, my father, also knows this. Their friendship shows us an attitude of non-jealousy. They also had the attitude of being all in for God. We know David and Goliath. From the very beginning, David is seen as one who is faithful. It's no wonder God chose him to lead his people, a man after his own heart. 1 Samuel 17, 29 through 32. Here's this great Goliath who's scared all the soldiers of Israel, and yet here's this scrawny little guy who comes up. He can't even fit in the king's armor and says, I'll defeat him. Why is anyone scared of this sinner 
is still a sting. If God is for us, who can be against us? As Paul would later write. Jonathan, though a little lesser known, in 1 Samuel chapter 14, 6 through 14, has the exact same attitude against the Philistines. That's because they have similar hearts. Not only were their attitudes the same, but their heart was the same. They were truly kindred souls, as we like to say, and loved each other so much that they would do anything for the other. As I said, when Jonathan's father Saul, the king of Israel, was looking to kill David, Jonathan warned him again and again and again. And Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, May the Lord take vengeance on David's enemies. That's his own father. We see David, after King Saul and Jonathan have passed, have gone on to the next, have died, and Saul's kingdom has been taken from him, and David is king. He seeks out one to care for Jonathan's relatives and Mephibosheth. And David said, Is there still anyone left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Again, this is abnormal. It's not usually the case. The new king would kill every single one. In fact, that's why Mephibosheth had run like he had. Well, been carried in health like he had because their house would be gone. That's why David said, Is there anyone left? That's why he was scared to death when she Mephibosheth when he came to the king. And David let him eat at his table with him the rest of their lives. What made them great friends? What made Jonathan a great friend of David and David a friend of his? They had similar attitudes. They didn't get jealous of each other. They loved God with their all. And they had a bond between them. A based in trust and loyalty. We all need friends like Jonathan. A friend can be closer than even a blood relative. Proverbs 18, 24. I've heard it said, maybe you have it too, blood is thicker than water, but... Water baptism and a brethren, a brother and sister, is thicker than blood. It's in friends we find strength when we're weak, Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10. It's in friends we find good counsel, Proverbs 27 and verse 9. It's in friends we're made better, Proverbs 27 and verse 17. And it's friends that help hold us accountable, 27 verse 6. Friendship like that of Jonathan and David is something God not only wants for us, but hopes we have. And whether that's in our spouse or in someone else, we need that. Jonathan and his life teaches us what a true friend is is someone who will do whatever we need to get us to heaven even if that means going contrary to our own family who's making the wrong decision or helping us to escape a bad decision we've made and get it corrected a friend helps us get to heaven friendship is vital to both our physical in our spiritual lives, and Jonathan teaches us this great lesson. As we reflect upon our walk with God, I pray you have a friend like that. Someone who is doing everything they can to get you to heaven. To help you in your day-to-day -day life, in your physical and in your spiritual lives. I hope you have a friend like Jonathan who loves you. Who cares for you. And wants what's best for you. And I also pray that you are that for someone else 
as well. Don't be the one who only accepts friendship and doesn't give out. Like David, reciprocate that which is offered. And do what David did and Jonathan in return each to one another. Love each other and help each other. This afternoon, as you reflect on your walk with God, as you think about your life, your friendships, and your family, your morality, and your failures, I pray that things are going like they should, that you're walking in the light like you should, that things are as they should be, but I also know that it's not always the case. And sometimes we need help. If you need a friend this afternoon to give you a hug, to encourage you, to strengthen you, to help you. If you need that friend today, let us be that for you. Let us be that which we can, that God wants us to be and you need. Let us help you by coming forward and letting us know as we stand and as we sing.